because there are threats of budget cuts. So I, so I am wondering what, what the resource allocation looks like and, and what internally the FTC looks like right now after, after you've had some significant losses, including the Microsoft Activision one. We obviously are bringing cases when we think there's a law violation. Uh, we've been thrilled that we've had a whole set of success, um, including with deterrence, which we hear a lot from market participants about the deterrent effect. And as a law enforcer, you always want to be making sure that firms are on clear notice about what could constitute a law violation and are staying far away from that line. Um, we were very grateful to receive a budgetary increase last year. That has enabled us to be growing our ranks. Uh, we're still hiring, um, and we're grateful for those additional resources and the additional work we'll be able to do with them. You know, deterrence is obviously very important, but when you do lose, there's uh, questions here specific to Microsoft. Uh, you lost in the U.S. court. Why not drop the action from there? Why seeking appeal? Why are you continuing to follow, for example, along uh, with the ALJ proceeding? Chair Khan, uh, you know, earlier um, Mr. Kanner sort of said he believes in our judicial system and will abide by judicial decisions. So why would you continue, given the court has already been heard from, with this action? We fully believe in our robust system of judicial review. Uh, I won't be able to comment on any specific matters, but generally, uh, if we get an adverse decision from a district court, we look very closely at it uh, to determine whether we think there were any um, errors of law or misapplication of law uh, that we think warrant appeal. Um, and so those are the types of assessments that we undertake as we make these decisions. Uh, there are a whole set of instances in which the FTC has not moved forward with an appeal. Uh, but in instances where it has, uh, sometimes quite successfully, uh, it's always because we believe that there was um, a, a misapplication of the law or further clarification of the law that needs to be done. Um, and that's usually what uh, drives those decisions. Yeah. I, you know, how much is are any of your decision making driven or at least in part uh, figures into your decision making? What goes on at the EU, for example, or even the CMA? And I ask that question in part because there was a lot of uh, back and forth, it would appear, based on a freedom of information request between the FTC and the CMA involving Microsoft and Activision. Seems somewhat unusual. How much does what they do figure into what how and how you think about what you do? Look, I was very fortunate to inherit uh, an agency that is seen as a leader globally. Uh, during the Bush administration, the FTC launched an Office of International Affairs. And so for over a decade now, the FTC has been uh, entering into cooperation agreements with enforcers around the world. Uh, there's been strong support historically uh, from the business community and encouragement for the FTC to be working closely with other enforcers to ensure what, what some folks call harmonization. Uh, so that's the state of affairs. Uh, the FTC works closely with other enforcers. But at the end of the day, we make all of our determinations based on the facts and based on U.S. law. Uh, we always use our independent judgment when we're making these enforcement decisions. Was, why was there a need at all to talk to the CMA about Activision and, and Microsoft? So there are various cooperation agreements in place, again, some of them uh, going back to the Bush administration that lay out appropriate processes. Uh, sometimes it's businesses that want to encourage the FTC to be talking to other enforcers to ensure more streamlined review and more efficient information sharing. So this has been a long-standing practice. Uh, I'm grateful that the FTC is viewed as a leader internationally, and, and all credit goes to our terrific staff of the Office of International Affairs that for many years now has been uh, ensuring that we are sharing our experience and expertise around the world. Uh, you mentioned your staff, and Sarah asked about it as well. Uh, you know, I want to reference a letter from uh, wh who was what was then the outgoing uh, Commissioner Christine Wilson. She was very critical of you uh, and of uh, of uh, the what she said was the dissatisfaction amongst the staff. How do you respond to when she says uh, your leadership has led to the departures of many experienced personnel, causing a notable brain drain? and goes on to say, pains her to observe the tarnishing of, a, of the FTC's reputation and the diminution of its efficacy. So look, we are fortunate to have consummate professionals, uh, extremely talented staff at the FTC who day after day are fighting to protect Americans from unfair methods of competition or unfair deceptive practices. 
Uh, of course, we work hard to make sure that the FTC uh, remains a great place to work. Uh, I've been really thrilled that we've been able to recruit a whole set of, of new folks. Uh, we just launched a new office of technology. Uh, within a matter of days, we got 600 applications from cutting edge technologists, data scientists, data engineers uh, who are eager to bring their skills and talents to the FTC. And so uh, we'll look forward to continuing to, to do that type of outreach and engagement and make sure that we're fully equipped in-house with the skills and talents that we need.